Right, folks, we're, um, we're going to look at Martin Luther King as a, as a protest organiser and how successful he actually was. So some of the information that I'm going to be talking to you about is actually going back to like the start of the 1960s. And, you know, we'll go through as far as we can on this video. Um, King had mixed successes as a protest organiser. So some of these events I'll talk about were successful. Some of them were failures and some you can draw your own conclusions from. It is interesting to consider that by the end of it, um, what was really the more radical concept, so we've actually really just done a, a couple of videos about black power, was it more radical, like out there to think, or oh, we'll, we'll get changed through violence, or was it really more radical? Um, and out there for someone like Martin Luther King to think by turning the other cheek and raising a, you know, like rising above these problems will get changed that way with the Gandhi approach because whereas the obvious way seems to meet fighting with fighting maybe it was more radical an idea more an extreme an idea to actually think yeah actually we'll solve these problems by not fighting by peaceful methods uh, I remember that from a lecture with um, Professor Yule when he visited the school. But I think it's an interesting way to take it because everybody thinks, you know, Black Panthers, Malcolm X, etc., they're really extreme, the radicals. Maybe King was the radical for actually thinking he could change things with this Gandhi approach. So we'll start off at the start of the 60s and you can again form your own opinion on how successful some of these events are. Um, basically King wants to secure a right to vote for black people so he, he had shot the prominence really with the Rosa Parks campaign and on the buses but he actually is looking to secure a vote so black people could you know bring change about themselves and he's always battling against these issues of poll taxes literacy tests grandfather clauses etc Um he was a supporter of the SNCC so before it was became violent when it was non-violent coordinating committee, the student non-violent coordinating committee. King did um, support these sit-in protests, these wait-in protests and swimming pools and segregated beaches, <coughs> um, etc. Um, he did support these, he worked alongside Carm Stoughton Carmichael for a while. He put his weight behind the Freedom Rides but he, he did get criticism for not being on the Freedom Rides. So. Whereas King did speak to Freedom Riders, critics of King would say, well, you supported it, but these were incredibly violent. Jim's work, for example, battered into a hospital bed, but you didn't go on them. Um, people who like King would say, well, he can't be everywhere at once. So in the early 60s, um, he's putting his weight behind something called the Albany Movement. And again, it's this time the Albany Movement was about ending um, segregation in public facilities and it's in Albany and Georgia where it's focused and you're looking at you know um, lunch counters so where people would sit and eat uh, public libraries uh, bus stations etc where were meant to be for white Americans so black Americans going to these and, and peaceful protests and you've got boycotts you've got marches the city halls marched on etc now this is in the deep south again it's in Georgia and the chief of police who's dealing with this is a man called Laurie Pritchard and he deals with it very cleverly because even though there's mass arrests he didn't want attention or publicity so basically what he does is he moves the protesters like scatters them around a lot of jails in south south and west and southwest Georgia basically so they're not filling one and he's trying to like not create attention in one place at all and um, so King had to really get involved in this um, because he was seen as keeping too safe a distance in the 1961 Freedom Rides. So he does visit Albany in December of 1961. And he had planned to stay, but he got basically caught up to it, caught up in it all. And um, he was arrested himself. And um, he did come back, he visited in 1962, and again... He's saying the concessions that were made to black protesters were violated by the city of Albany and he was given a choice to make and the choice King had was you can do 45, uh, 45 days in jail or you can have a $178 fine and King was very clever what he did here. He chose jail so he chose to be a martyr to 
basically advance his cause to get attention which is basically working against everything Pritchard was trying not to happen because he didn't want attention and martyrs and people going down for their beliefs to be a feature in Georgia so King wanted to go to jail he spent about three days there and Pritchard arranged secretly for the fine to be paid and King said we well, basically were witnessing the first black person to be kicked out of the jail at that time which is an interesting take on it um, the movement didn't really get any more significant concessions and in the end it just started to gradually stop we did see where it actually was turning a little bit violent so there's evidence of black youths throwing bottles rocks etc missiles at the Albany police which is again against what King wanted so he himself would have seen failures in this and he asked basically for a day of penance where he could like non-violence would be shown and he wanted to leave this moral high ground to show well actually we aren't taking place in this but he again we are taking place in these like um violent attacks i want to show the good face of civil rights um, and the way i want it done but again he was arrested and in the end he would leave town so the albany movement you could argue was a failure um, the most controversial one probably is the children's crusade so what happened is uh, Martin Luther King had basically gone to Birmingham in Alabama which is you know one of the one of the, the, the heat seeking places at that time for civil rights and um, basically he gets in trouble again um, and he, he writes this letter from Birmingham jail and he says in the letter which he wrote on um, like the corners of you know like newspaper or toilet paper etc um, he basically says civil rights will only occur when there's non-violent direct action so protest without violence and he gave a hell of a lot of thought of what he was going to ask for here and he's going to ask for children to be in the protest so you know like you're getting like high school children so think about your own age and college age getting involved in this it wasn't a decision that King took lightly but he also you can argue the power of children getting involved now the problem you had in Birmingham Alabama was is that they actually um, have this guy called Bull Connor who is uh, present and Bull Connor was like just a, a zero tolerance approach he's a, he's a Democrat politician but he's also a police commissioner and a member of the uh, Ku Klux Klan and Connor was famous for his use of using fire hoses on protesters so like you know spraying them down with water you know and also setting police dogs loose and Bull Connor basically um, as I've mentioned there's a lot of television footage at this time and the television cameras see and pick up and the press pick up Bull Connor using fire hoses on children and setting dogs on them which is terrible publicity and makes the South look really 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 bad particularly Bull Connor and um, he got a hell of a lot of bad publicity he put 3,000 people in jail during the children's crusade most of them are children so you've got jails full of children so this makes again Bull Connor in the South look very very bad this is leading into the Washington March so the protest did continue and would culminate in the I Have a Dream speech but it's interesting before the I Have a Dream speech the King um, had the children's crusade and, and a big critic of this <coughs> was Malcolm X who said you never ever ever put a child in, um, in harm's way and you can see Malcolm X's argument but then you've got Martin Luther King didn't take this line you know like it wasn't a like decision for him and he did say that you know like you, you can make the argument here that using children showed really what was happening in the south because um, it's its use of innocence and it would create this martyr complex and it would show up what was happening with the likes of Bull Connor in the deep south so it's a, it's a big issue so when this leads into the um, I have a dream speech we know the I have a dream speech has a huge um, impact on President Kennedy we know that um, it inspires black and white Americans there was white Americans in the crowd as well King is seen as a charismatic leader it's so well organized you know it's touched on it in another video about this and um, it led to the Birmingham bombings which although horrific again heightened and highlighted what was being done to young people in the south 
and this was huge because um it actually embarrassed the KKK, it embarrassed white supremacists that even though they tried through fear to get their way of stopping the civil rights protest, it just inspired it to go further and gain white support as well as black support. Now, what also happened was President Kennedy, JFK, was the president at that time. The Kennedy assassination happened in Dallas, Texas, uh, where young, good-looking, charismatic President Kennedy was shot. You know, the footage is on the internet. It's horrible to see and dies in the the arms of his wife when visiting Dallas, Texas. This means that Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ, would become the new president of America. And Lyndon Johnson um, is a southerner, he's from Texas. And the Kennedy family are from the northern states. Johnson was from the south and he was chosen, one of the reasons was, is because there was still this north-south divide and a distrust of the north distrusted the south and the south distrusting the north. So Kennedy has a ticket that appeals to both. And with Kennedy dying and this mourning, and there was huge mourning in America at that time when the, the nation mourned its dead president, but also a southerner passing a civil rights bill is going to be huge because the South would trust LBJ, would trust Johnson a hell of a lot more than they would have trusted Kennedy if this hadn't happened. So on the back of the sympathy for the death of Kennedy and a southerner putting a civil rights bill through instead of a northerner, we get the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Um, I'm bringing this in here because it's it, it like sort of bolts on, shall we say, to the um, to the Washington March. And basically, what Johnson does is with this Civil Rights Act is he outlaws discrimination in hotels, restaurants, theaters, basically public motels, public places. So the only places that could still have segregation will be private areas, so private clubs for white people. You know, an example would be a golf club, that's a private club. But any public areas, it's going to outlaw discrimination. And it basically also says um, public schools, it encourages the desegregation of these, and it makes it illegal for any government money to go to a um, organisation that continues to segregate. So you're going to get no government funding at all if you're actually segregating or having segregation within any area of your like um, business or routine at that time. Um, all government agencies were desegregated, so again, like Truman had wanted, this happens. LBJ says there will be no segregation in the government anymore, and there is going to be very little fighting against this because it's seen as Kennedy's dying wish. Kennedy was on board with civil rights, he liked what he saw from heard from King, and a southerner was putting it forward, Lyndon Johnson, a Texan. Um, it doesn't get welcomed by black Americans as much as you would want, though, I think, though, because basically King had been going for this right to vote, as I said at the start of the video, and that hadn't happened, so there was still a reliance on white Americans to make decisions that would back and support black Americans at the polls at the voting booths. So black Americans, yeah, there's been massive concessions here from Lyndon Johnson. It's a huge step, this Civil Rights Act of 1964, but it didn't give what King had set out to do, which was the vote. So you make your own decisions on that. There's good and there's not so good, depending how you look at it as a success or a failure for King. Thanks for watching.